e-stuff is in. E-cars, e-bikes, e-skateboards, e-wheels. In modern day YouTube, electric vehicles are an indispensable part of a creator's workflow. I need to get an e-thing. Normally, you rip through traffic in somewhere like New York City, overtaking pathetic pedestrians and giving the middle finger to anyone who says that you are a nuisance. And then in a coffee shop, whilst you work on that screenplay, your electric vehicle charges quietly from the AC outlet and then you ride home. But therein lies my problem. In Scotland, it's not really like that. I live miles and miles from town, and the bits of Scotland that I'd want to explore on an EV don't have many coffee shops or AC outlets. The ever-present fear of running out of battery has a name, range anxiety. What I want is an EV that I can cruise around the Scottish countryside with without worrying about where the next AC outlet is. I need a grand tourer. And here is my solution. It's a boosted board stealth electric skateboard with two 800 watt hour range extending car batteries strapped on top. Performance is somewhat affected by the addition of the batteries which weigh 18 kilograms each for a total addition weight of 36 kilograms. Look at the braking time. Admittedly, weighing almost 45 kilograms does make maneuvering the board difficult at times. Nevertheless, these monstrous batteries can recharge the boosted board eight times over for an estimated range of around 100 miles. A grand tourer, if you will. Despite my excitement, Kim was not so impressed. It's not on, you'll be fine. That is so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not that bad. It feels like I'm standing on top of a bomb. <laughs> How much does it weigh? It weighs combined about a hundred pounds. Half of you? <laughs> not, it's more than half of you. It looks right. terrible. <laughs> okay. People are going to think you're just skateboarding with a bomb. <laughs> Like, people are going to phone the police, we can't do this. So how, how do you actually charge it from that? I thought you'd never ask. Right, check this. So... Here's how my solution is supposed to work. You connect the car batteries to an AC inverter, which you can then plug the boosted board charger into as normal. Each car battery has enough for about four charges. During my extensive research, I discovered that you could actually charge the car batteries using a cheap foldable solar panel. That means that this setup could be carbon-free travel. I don't, I don't like the batteries, babe. <laughs> totally impractical. I do like the solar panels. Cool, cool that it can be charged by solar yeah, panels, right? Yeah, I like that. Can you not just charge the board directly from the solar panels? You probably could. Perhaps two car batteries strapped to an electric skateboard was a little bit unwieldy. Kim was more interested in how I planned to charge the car batteries in the first place. What she really loved was this foldable solar panel. And you can use these to charge all sorts of things, laptops, phones, they're especially good for drone batteries. So Kim's suggestion was to just get rid of those big bulky car batteries altogether and just get a couple of these, put these in your rucksack and charge the board directly from the solar panels. So I got a couple more solar panels. I also changed skateboard. This board has double the range of the boosted board great for touring. I also fitted Slick Revolution Fomes wheels. These give you the range of a traditional skate wheel with the comfort of a pneumatic tyre. Perfect for long distances. 
To connect the solar panels to the board, my idea was to use this little charge controller. When I plug the board into this, hopefully it will think it's just been plugged into the wall and begin charging normally. So you plug these solar panels into this charge controller, you plug this into the board and hopefully it charges. And all of this stuff can just go in my rucksack. Now all I need is one sunny day in Scotland to test this and see if it actually works. Yeah. On the next sunny day in Scotland, I took the board out for a spin to see if this would actually work. I rode until the battery was completely dead and then plugged in four solar panels. We are charging at 110 watts, which is reasonably close to what you could get out of the wall. What do you know? It works. After around 80 minutes, I had a full charge from the sun. This is pretty cool. A 100% solar powered form of travel, totally carbon free and no more range anxiety. To really prove this concept, however, I actually needed to go somewhere with it. A challenge. Here's what I came up with. The goal would be to ride the board in a single day from Glasgow across Scotland to Edinburgh Castle, a distance of 60 miles. The rules? No charging from the wall, only solar energy supplied by the panels I carry in my rucksack. With the board fully charged from the day before, I set out on my grand tour. So currently in George Square, right at slap bang in the centre of Glasgow. This board is filled to the brim with solar energy that we harvested from the sun yesterday. And my bag is packed full of solar panels. Edinburgh is 60 miles over there somewhere. We're going to try and get there today. This is day one, hour zero. Let's go. So this is actually the only part of the journey that is illegal. It was a gorgeous, quiet Sunday morning in Glasgow. The road initially was a little rough. Ah, this is horrible. I didn't even know skateboards could go over that. But it soon smoothed out. This is beautiful, smooth ground. And that's good for my leggies and for the battery. We're making some progress now. I am running on Starlight right now. 100% solar powered. Right now, the only emissions I'm producing are from my breath and from my farts. I traveled a very uneventful 14 miles before the board ran out of battery and we set up to recharge. Time for a recharge. And the sun is, is playing ball. Two, three. Go. 30 watts, 40 watts. Yes, it's working. Come on, son. <laughs> Come into the board. After an hour or so of charging, we were back on the road. All right, second leg, let's go. Nice and easy on the throttle this time. It looks like in that hour of charging, we only actually got about a three quarter charge, maybe even a half charge. However, I'm taking it a lot more easy and the path is a lot smoother. I'm not navigating through Glasgow tiny little streets. This is when I realized I had no range anxiety. All I had to do was cruise along. This is when you can really start enjoying an electric vehicle. 90 minutes later, we have managed to get a full charge. So the aim is to ride 50 miles as quickly as possible, drain the battery and recharge it while the sun's still high.
My feet are absolutely killing me. Ah, uh, but we're like 30 miles in now. Ah. Uh, uh, that's horrible. The issue on this leg has definitely been traffic. Battery life is good, road is good, but the path is so narrow that to pass anyone, you have to slow right down and it just kills your efficiency and you have to start that acceleration all over again. It's, it's actually really frustrating to do this. Too busy complaining about traffic at my sore feet, I failed to notice daylight was fading. Still 20 miles from Edinburgh, I still needed two further charges to make it. miles to Edinburgh. I don't know if there's going to be enough sunlight to get a decent enough charge to finish the very last leg, which means we're going to end up like five miles short. Uh, easy, easy does it. The good news is, there is no traffic on the cycle path anymore. It's all just dropped off. I'm clear to go. Oh, my feet. Uh. With 13 miles to go, we were forced to stop for another charge. Not because the board was empty, but because this really was the last of the usable daylight. We need to capture the last of it. We're 30 miles outside Edinburgh and I need a charge. Let's do it. Okay, right. We know if this will even develop any power at this time. Yes, it's working. 30 watts, 40 watts, 45 watts, I'll take that. This must look daft. With the sunlight gone, we had to make do with what charge was left. I proceeded at a painfully slow crawl to conserve battery. Let's try and get there before it's too dark. Edinburgh, 12 miles. I'm confident we'll do it. There's no traffic on the road. Just need to get there before it's really dark. nine miles to go. Soon, it was very, very dark. I can't see a thing. I'm using my phone to light the way. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Uh, this is way later than I thought. Civilization. It was way too dark to be doing this safely. This was really stupid and dangerous. But I was going so slowly but the board's battery still wasn't empty. I think we have enough battery, it's just I can't see. Thank <laughs> for these street lights. Oh my God, I've never been so glad to see street lights in my life. Two miles to go. Jesus. And this thing is just crawling along. How the <laughs> is it still going? Finally, the castle was in sight. It's closed. I was so exhausted and tired from this 14 hour journey. This is the summary that I filmed. I made it to the castle. It is closed though, but I don't really care. And it's the worst thing I ever did in my life. By the time you are watching this, we are at least 82% through 
2019. And you probably already in the back of your mind have a skill that you'd like to learn for 2020. I'll start in January, right? Well, here's some advice. Give yourself an 18% head start and start now. Get a jump on 2020 and start learning that skill for work or just for yourself and elevate yourself for next year. One of the issues that can sometimes put people off learning something new is that daunting thought of the minefield of boring, overly complex and unclear tutorials available online. If you want to avoid all of that, then Skillshare is a good place to start. It's an online learning platform with over 30,000 classes taught by people who excel at teaching. You can learn whatever you like. Coding and app development is something that has lots of resources, perhaps animation or film production. And if you just need more of me, I teach a few classes too. One on solving the Rubik's Cube the easiest way, and another about learning itself. This six part video class covers mindset, efficient practice, and how to push through the dip in learning. It will give you strategies to help mitigate against throwing in the towel when you experience a lull in your learning process. Usually Skillshare is less than 10 bucks a month, but since they are sponsoring the show, my viewers get two months of premium access for free. Just follow the link in the description. And there's no commitment to stay on after the offer ends. So check out Skillshare, the link is down below. And by doing that, you'll also be helping to support the show. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.